We're interrupting this program in order to begin our regularly scheduled broadcast. Thanks for watching the Lit TV Network. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I'm your host, Kim Warner. Welcome to Kim's Universe. I have Ashley Townsend Daniels with me on today and Maite Warner. We're going to get into the topic on the covenant on a deeper level, uh, looking at Joseph's experience. Okay, Ashley and Maite, where in the world are you? Hi. Hey, hey, hey. I'm still in New Jersey, but it's warmer now, thankfully. So, okay, <laughs> warmer as in what, what's it? What's warmer over there? Oh, you know, we're it's, it's summer for us now. It's forty degrees. Oh. <laughs> it's forty degrees here. Y'all gonna have that weather back? We're in Jacksonville. <laughs> All right, Mike, yeah. tell them about your business. <laughs> um. So my business is designed by Maite. I do graphic designing. Um, I do jewelry making. Um, I'm trying to get more into the graphic design um, like spectrum of everything um, and just expanding my business. Um, I do logos and um, like flyers um, for her social media sites. Um, basically any of your graphic design needs, I can pretty much cover anything to make it fit your style with my flair in there. So. All right. Wonderful. And Ashley, you're with who again? Still with Business Grace, still doing coaching and consulting for businesses if you need any. That is building the foundation, diagnosing any issues you may or may not have in your business that you're not able to identify, as well as any career services, resume writing, um, cover letters. I'm also stepping in, stepping into editing with Miss Kim. So reach out and together we can collaborate and work together. Right. And so the reason why we're on the three of us together today is because they are collaborating, Maite and Ashley, with me on writing a book on the chakra system. We want people to know that your inner work is your inner wealth and that's how you create your outside manifestations of peace. So as we go further, um, we're going to look at a question that our producer asked, um, and we brought up this um, thought in the last taping, and it was um, pertaining to the defense mechanism that comes up in partnerships, relationships, friendships, and the numbing factor that comes in from the ego. Anybody want to give an analogy on that? Um, and I looked at it as, um, the ego telling us that it's not good to be vulnerable when we are actually working out a level of soul salvation for authenticity. Um, oftentimes when we are in um, the church or we've read salvation, we didn't get the understanding that it was about freedom. Freedom is not just for a collective, it will begin with an individual taking a stand to stand up and say, it's okay for me to let down my walls. And some people might say, well, you know, people are going to continue to um, ridicule me and, and hurt my feelings. Well, what you have to do is like go to the gym and begin to exercise strength within yourself. Muscle up your emotions. That means learn why you're so emotional when someone says something um, that doesn't feel good. Why doesn't it feel good? Maybe you have too much emotion invested in others and what they say. Maybe you're still people pleasing, you know? So anyone want to give any thoughts on that? I also feel like that weakness comes from what we see inward and we reflect that on other people. So sometimes we sit here and say, oh, I don't like that about something or um, I don't I don't like the way they're so outgoing or and maybe that's just a weakness that you have in yourself. You know, um, you're sitting here judging on other people or not judging per se, but um, reflecting outward when you should re be reflecting inward. Um, I was at work the other day and um, we had this new person come in and they seem like a nice person. I haven't really talked to them before, um, but one of um another coworker was like I just don't like them and I'm like why and I'm like you haven't even talked to them 
and they're sitting here, you know, just like, I just, they just rubbed me the wrong way. I'm like, it's probably, you need to look inward. You know, I was like, it's probably something about yourself that you don't like about yourself that they have, or, or you know, that you see in them and you're just jealous. And I was like, and it's not like a, I'm trying to make you feel like, like a less of a person, but maybe it's something that you need to look inward to instead of, you know, just braiding this person that you just met five seconds ago, you know? Good point. Good point. That is an awesome point. Um, keep that camera still on. We're recording for a studio take. Go ahead. This Sorry. is live and we're real people, surely. Go ahead. Great point. I love it. I think I think you hit the nail on the head with the vulnerability because um, when you're not comfortable with yourself and someone tells you about yourself, you're kind of like, I don't care what you have to say. Yeah. Because immediately it's like, well, if I didn't dismiss what you have to say, it's not true. But the truth is, you know, it's real. You know that about yourself and you're uncomfortable showing that aspect because you put on the facade. You have this face like I'm the best thing since sliced bread when really maybe not so much. Maybe you're not so comfortable with yourself and you are trying to fake it till you make it. But mm -hmm. you can't fake it till you make it until you deal with that vulnerability. And then you get your affirmations and you start to put in your mind and plant those seeds of, I am the best thing since sliced bread. And then suddenly you are because you've dealt with those uncomfortabilities. But when you don't do it, yeah. and somebody else says something to you, you're like, I don't care what you have to say, whatever. I don't need to deal with your mess. It's it's really it's not their mess. It's yours. Yeah. Right. So here... um. Good points, ladies, you know, um, wonderful. Um, vulnerability, um, I wrote in, you know, my information. I always make notes. Vulnerability is being transparent. Um, it's like Adam and Eve in the garden. They were naked until some things took place and they realized that they were in this world, right? The spirit world wasn't no more because they had some things that transpired. But anyway, it's being transparent to know that you are naked in a sense, not having to worry about what others feel or say, because this is the key. I am strong in my conviction of my truth. I live authentically and I share my true feelings by shedding the mask that has covered my true nurturing ability. So what happens in the defense mechanism, there's not been a nurturing somewhere. Maybe nature has been the partaking of an individual's life and they need that balance of nurture and nature, which is why we have Adam and Eve. We have mother and father. So that takes us over into the, the covenant. The mother and the father, they do nurturing and nature. They they protect, they provide. Yes, they, they work together. Now that could be a oneness within an individual, but in the individual, let's go further. The covenant begins to stand as we look at this individually, because as as Maite said, you're jealous because maybe you're you're, you're afraid of making a, a stand for something. You're jealous because you see someone that's standing strong in who they are. But what is that all about? Why don't you notice it and work on it? I believe that we don't notice it and work on it because we're just coming into revealing thyself and the mask is falling away. We're exposing people even today, not to be offensive, but to help the, the words and the understanding come forth to take the mindset of old off so new can come in. So when we look at Joseph, Joseph dealt with a lot of these issues, you know, he, listen, but he ran his mouth. And that's one of the things that I want to get to. He said some things and he gave information to people that weren't for him. Um, he also had an anointing over in uh, Genesis 37 that said um, grace was already on his life, but he was favored. He was a child that his father loved, in a sense, it, it says it more than the other brothers because he was begotten by a, a woman that he truly loved. So there was jealousy throughout his um, siblings for him. And then that coat of colors came in. Let me just read this and then you guys can come on in. All right. So Joseph is recognized as being a dreamer. God is speaking to him. Joseph is a dreamer. God is speaking to him. So there's a covenant that's already in process at this point in time. 
sometimes we don't look at that as individuals but if anyone is listening viewers today your covenant is already standing it's that you come into agreement with uh, God in it. You recognize that you're a dreamer and things are happening for true on the outside as you dream within and it comes to manifestation outside. This is a covenant. You have to begin to say yes to God and no to the people because really ridiculing as in when we go further, I'm going to read on. Jacob dwelt in the land. This is um, Joseph's father. And we remember the covenant between um, Jacob Isaac and Abraham, you know, it said uh, the father, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So there's a covenant over uh, a Christian and those that practice spirituality from the Christian foundation. Right. Because those three are in that covenant like we're here today in three. And the reason why we're here is because we've been writing a book together that's taking people into an inner uh, stability and understanding of themselves. So here, Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Jo Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren and the lad was with the sons of Bela and with the sons of Zephlah. His father's wives and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now, e now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of colors. And so when we looked up the coat of colors, we seen that it was connected to the rainbow, even as we talked about Noah's rainbow. And so there's some um, particulars in the bible that give us an understanding of covenant the covenant is not just seen outside we have a rainbow of colors within us as we go deeper and we look at the mysteries of um the bible so why do we look at the mysteries because they're given to us some people are not receiving them but here is the mysteries of joseph joseph receives the coat of colors and really no one really knows if we go and we look and allow our imagination to flow if Joseph's father in the earth gave it to him or if his father in the spirit gave him this coat of colors, which is very important because if you can decide for heaven and earth, then you can put it together and say Joseph couldn't have gotten the coat from his father, period, if God hadn't have given it to his father as a covenant keeper for his son. Here is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. OK, what does this mean? OK, let's go further, Kim. Don't stop there. When. His brethren saw that their father loved him more than his brethren. They hated him. So there, this is a cliffhanger right here for people. Listen, you know when people don't like you, so stop sharing the information. Parents, stop sharing with people information about your children because you set them up for hardships that they may not have to go through, right? And I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying, if you follow the Bible, this is wisdom because someone didn't tell Jacob that he must show love to all his children equally. All right, mm -hmm. let's keep going. Joseph dreamed a dream and he told his brethren and they hated him even more. So Joseph opened his mouth. He's not only a favorite child, but he sounds like a bragger to me. I'm going to tell you, because going over this here uh, scripture, not yesterday, but years just looking at it because it's so much like my life going through changes after changes, hoping that you might have got there, but you failed and you had to come back up out of the pit. And then here's another pit, but you're up again and then you're down again. He dreamed again and again, and he told who? His brothers. He may have felt like they loved him, but if he had had the wisdom at that time of his life that he would gain as he went on, he would have kept his mouth shut. Yes? Why? Because everyone does not care about spiritual things. The other thing is, is that he was already set up to be despised by his family. Now, family is a covenant, but... That means that the covenant has to start with somewhere. So I see him as a generational changer. Now, let me just go further and then I'm gonna let you guys come in. And he said unto him, them, here, I pray you this dream, which I've dreamed. This is Joseph. For I behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood round about and made ambiance to my sheaf. Now he's saying to them, my sheaf, 
was greater than yours and it bowed down. So that meant that they were going to bow down to him. The timing that he gives this information has nothing to do with the time that he will go through situations of heartbreak and destitute, even imprisonment, you know? And his brother said, thou shalt indeed reign over us. There's a question mark. Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? Question mark. And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told his brethren and said, behold, I will dream a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made ambiance to me. Now, the sun and the moon bowed down to him. This is what he was saying. Now, what I could give in this here information is, is that this was wisdom and wisdom takes time to manifest that means that after all of the years this is a 17 year old boy who went through um subjugation of his brothers actually making it look like he was dead but at the end of all of this as you read on through genesis what happens is is that this man has been set up to become a ceo a mass leader through the journeys and the situations that he's going through. You know, my appeal is to any of you all, right? Because when you're looking at this situation, the covenant says that if I stick with God through the highs and the lows, and many people don't know what this journey is going to take them on, even in the, the understanding of the dreams that he had, he had no idea that he was going to be put in a position where he would have to be subjected to the issues of imprisonment, being blamed for rape, on and on, but at the end of the day, he stayed true to his covenant and that seership. Something about the vision and the ongoing visions that he would have, I bring back fact of the matter and I say masses. He was set up to rule Egypt and become a prime minister, but there's so many people out there that are going through, I, I, I quit, I give up because of the discouragement and the issues. You can't quit. You might be that Joseph. You could have that Joseph spirit, which is a Christ type, because even though many people speak of Jesus, what is happening, they forget about the challenges that Jesus went through, the temptation before he could even walk into leading disciples. The greater, the greater depths of understanding is when I begin to feel what some of these men have felt, even if I talk about Ruth, what she went through with Naomi, you know what I'm saying? But the thing is, it's the feeling. Do you feel him? And does any of this resonate with you? Because when sun and moon and 11 stars bow down to you, that means that you will have mastery over the universe. Hello. Now, I ain't just talking. It's so much more to Kim's universe that is going to be given that I understand the sun and the moon. Because whenever you captivate the wisdom of God through his word and you stand true to it, not one day, but forever, and you make that choice of commitment, you're going to see the world up under your feet. I give it to you, ladies. Yes. Ricky. How you doing? Um, <laughs> you said something that I have been, that I've been highlighting. In fact, I had, I, I made a post about it uh, yesterday and I talked about um, the mainstream Christian message. And the mainstream Christian me message is bless me, bless me. God will, God will heal. Um, God will answer every prayer. God will do this. God will do that. And what, what has happened with that message is that uh, we become lopsided in our faith. And now we're only, we're only trusting God as long as he answers our prayer. We're mm -hmm. only trusting God as long as he does something for us. And as soon as, soon as some bad days come or, or a collection of bad days then we, we we stop trusting God. And you said that we have to stick with God through the highs and the lows. But unfortunately for too many of us, we're just stuck with sticking with God through the highs. And when I when I look at Joseph, what I, what I like about Joseph is that, number one, 
he had integrity and he loved God before he even had the vision, which is important because that's what that's what kept him through everything that he went through. He loved God before he even had before he even understood what the vision was, his, the vision that God gave him. He loved God. And I think that that is so important that that we as an individual, that we have that same love. We have that same focus that is not so much um, what I'm going to do, but it, it, it's, it's who I serve and, and, and stick with him, not just through the high times, but through the lows. And I saw a post the other day and it said um, in 2023, it really did really bother me. It said um, this was coming and it said in 2023, you won't have any disappointments. Wow. And, and that bothered me. Yes. Because again, that's the mainstream Christian message to tell people you won't have. OK, so what happens when I have disappointments? Yeah. What happens when I get thrown into a pit? What happens when I get sold? What happens when when family turns against me? You said I won't have any disappointments. Yeah. You know, you pump my head up that, that God is not going to give me any disappointment. So we have not taught people how to stick with God. And that's what that's why I thank God for you and for, for your ministry and for what you're doing, for your teachings. Um, you. We have not taught people how to stick with God through the highs and the lows. And I, and I appreciate you saying that. And I'm going back in the hiding. He said he's going back in the hiding. Do you guys want to add before we go any further? Because. You know, the I, I love that he came in and I hope that he comes in more uh, during the tapings because a man's view is so valued. You know, we need that that balance. So anything you want to add? A um, couple things. OK, you have taught me so much about relying on God and and being mindful because I, I communicate a lot. I'm a talker. Yeah. And um. In Joseph's story, he's sharing and he's just sharing and sharing and sharing. And while I see the bragging of it, I also see the um, being a little bit naive. Yeah, I'm Come sharing on. because Come I just want to give this information that I have and I want you to grow and I want you to be great. And I want you to hear everything I got to tell you and all this stuff is given to me. But when people aren't ready to hear that, mm -hmm. you're going to be met with adversity. Yes. And and when you're met with that adversity, then you have to get quiet and you have to rely on that love. And that's what Ricky just brought up about the love that we have to have with God in our covenant. Like you have to rely on that because when you're facing those adversities and like I said, things are being stripped away and you're looking like, what, what is happening? What, what is going on? I, I, I don't understand. It's because those things have to be stripped away for you to get to your to your Christ like. Amen. That's how you build that inner kingdom. You've had those things, those vulnerabilities, those insecurities, those those challenges because it's to grow you and to make you better. I said to you before, the woman that I was two years ago prayed to be the woman that I am now. Amen. And the woman that I am now is going to pray to be who I will be in six months and thus forth. And it's because I stay true to myself to God and that unconditional love to have with myself and understanding that these things come up to teach me, to grow me and to raise me up. Mm -hmm. That's a practice, um, not to cut you off. It's a practice that Christians have to have in order, not, in order for them not to be disappointed as Ricky brought up because it's unreal that you won't have um, falls in life because we're here to learn. Mm -hmm. So even in our Christian faith, God is with us, but we must experience. Now, because we're running out of time, I want to add, um, my take, do you want to add anything about this here? Yeah, I don't so want to cut anybody off, but yeah. So I, all, all I could think about when, like, through hearing the whole story and after Ricky and Ashley, I, it's like being on a roller coaster with your seatbelt. And you have to have that seatbelt on the whole time. You can't just sit here and go down and drop and be like, okay, we're done now. And then take the seatbelt off. No, you about to go back up and you about to go down. Like you, you have to have that seatbelt on, you know? And the moment you, you go away from me, like, no, I'm going to be safe without that seatbelt. You are going to need that seatbelt, you know? And the seatbelt is, is God. Yes, you know, yep. it's the invisible part of you. <laughs> 
um, saying that God has got this rather than me losing my composure. Okay, roller coaster and to be um, safe. To be safe means that I want to go a little bit deeper too, um, since we have this time, because when we look at um, Joseph, Joseph also brought forth a structure and any um, mass leader um, is going to have a need to follow a structure. If they're all over the place with um, their ideas, then they're going to keep having pitfalls because they don't have a structure. The structure is number one. Structure brings in the safety when you're on a roller coaster ride, even when you're going down, you're saying, okay, this is going to work out because God told me that it's going to work out. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to work out because your God and you, your ego told you. Some people will have to, we all have had to align with the vision that God has given us. So we look at Joseph as a visionary being um, birthed. And his birthing was taking him through journeys of understanding how he could actually look at situations and things that God gave him and interpret, also begin to interpret for others, which means that you're interpreting for others. Now you will begin at some point to interpret for yourself or your interpretations for others is going to take you to a head position why? Because you always, like Ricky said, you kept your honor and integrity. And you see how all three of us had an idea of um, his way. I think that he could have been somebody of a mercurial energy because he spoke a lot or Virgo energy, you know. Um, why? Because they're communicators. This communication that Joseph was getting, he was given from the heavenlies, which is a mercurial aspect. You know, when you go into Greek um, teachings, Hellenistic, what you'll find is, is that Hermes is the God of communication, the God of public speaking, you know, and that is not to take away from Christianity, but to understand that I study beyond the veil. I study beyond what people are saying because I want to understand life. Why? Because psych psychology is a root of of who I am. I help people to understand themselves, which is behavior. Everything that you do, according to the church, is not going to get us to the place that we need simply because of what Ricky just said. People don't believe that they need to own their challenges or anything that they created as a challenge. So we, we teach problem solution. We mm -hmm. teach problem and solution. Who is the problem? I told them in my leadership uh, uh, class yesterday, listen, Jesus is on the cross. He got two thieves over here. There is some part of Jesus that had to be crucified. I don't care how God-like people make him. He is still a man with flesh and flesh embodies ego, mm. which means that there has to be a breaking. What's next? I, you know, if you don't like what I'm saying, God bless you to come into some truth because the reason why people can't meet the markets because they don't feel like they're